This is MJ. I'm an author. I'm an artist. I'm an analyzer. You can find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Welcome to Red Panda Report. This is uh, episode 11. I'm talking about episode 11 of Red Panda Adventures called Duality. It originally aired May 26, 2006, and here is the copy for it. Simon Radford, released this morning, apparently cured, thought you should know. So reads the terse note from the Red Panda's agent. But can a maniac like Radford, who once terrorized the city as the villainous electric eel, ever truly be reformed? And if so, who is behind the reign of terror that sweeps across the city? Can our heroes crack this case while struggling with their own duality? So, this episode is very interesting. Uh, let me see if there's anything negative I can point out about it first. I'm going to say no. I can't think of anything bad or negative in this episode that I objected to or had a problem with. Uh, I mean, maybe a slightly, you know, <laughs> socialist perspective, but uh, I can excuse that. Mostly because the heroism and altruism of Red Panda kind of counteracts any of that, you know, capitalist guilt stuff. And also... Let's not get distracted with that. Let's go ahead and keep talking about the actual content of the episode. So, really, there was nothing else for me to dislike. Um, I absolutely adored the use of the title, the name, the phrase, Queen Street Sanitarium for the Criminally Deranged. That's a gem. A real, real gem. It has a certain music to it, doesn't it? That's enough time trying to drudge up bad stuff about this episode, because, you know, that's not necessary. I want to talk about all the good stuff. I got very emotional during this episode, both in hearing Red Panda talk about what a wastrel he was and the guilt that he has over his family, because while I feel it's a little silly and uh, I won't you know, elaborate on that, uh, I love and appreciate the drama that it makes for him. And it's really great that he, you know, the, the line is specifically this, basically, or it was basically this, my family was so wealthy that I had no choice or there was nothing left for me to do but to make myself into somebody else that is a condemnation of his family it's a condemnation of his uh his father his and his grandfather and anyway i don't believe in condemning people for where they come from and i think that that ethic or concept is shown quite beautifully with red panda here because he comes from let's just admit or let's just you know accept what he's saying let's say he comes from a terrible family and his father uh his fathers were not innocent businessmen they were corrupt they were criminal they were whatever in order to get all that money that he could just fruit it away as he said okay and what what have you chosen to do with it red panda you have chosen to become somebody else. You've chosen to become something else. You've chosen to take on the plight of the downtrodden and stop the smaller, arguably more honorable or more honest criminals uh, who plague the streets, who you know work at such a smaller level. But it's a uh, yes, anyway, uh, who work at such a smaller level. And not only those criminals, but also these super criminals like the electric eel. You use and you take, and I think you redeem and make it worthwhile everything, every sin that your family committed. And of course, that's not me condoning doing bad stuff and saying, it'll work out for the good someday, just do bad. I'm saying what he's done with it is he's taken all of that negativity and he's fixed it and corrected it by doing all the good that he's done. And yes, could that have been done a different way? Yes, sure. But that's not the story that Taylor wrote. And what Red Panda has chosen to do with that is good. The fact that he feels guilty about his family's legacy I believe is a credit to him. The fact that Kit uh, feels sympathetic towards him and helps him to see the other side of it is a credit to her. And <laughs> it's a beautiful dynamic. If they weren't, you know, potentially romantically involved, then it would just be proof of an amazingly strong uh, friendship that um, is very touching. Uh, with how things might go later, it, you know, might add another dimension to it. Um, especially because she's a scrappy, you know, less uh, well-off young woman, and she could end up marrying into uh, the family of one of the, you know, into one of the city's wealthiest families, uh, if they were ever, ever to go down that, uh, that path. Um, but anyway, I just think that's really interesting. There's a duality for you to tie into the actual title of the episode. Um, but yeah, I think that's really interesting. And then 
Uh, honestly, uh, the next time I got really emotional was when Red Panda was going to draw uh, Radford or Electric Eel's fire for Kit so that she could um, take care of things. And that's what they ended up doing. But uh, her performance showed so much emotion that it felt like this image of unrequited love or of fear of love lost because Red Panda was basically willing to sacrifice himself in order to stop Radford. But to, you know, he sent himself out to do that for Kit to stop Radford so that, you know, she would live even if he died. And he was willing to make that sacrifice for the city, yes, but also for her. I think something that makes it a little more profound is they were actually not in their home city. I don't know how the whole Niagara Falls, you know, northern or like, you know, American versus uh, Canadian side of it works, but there is something there. There's a difference. There's a border there. And, you know, they weren't in Toronto, I think. <laughs> Again, I'm not very strong with geography and I didn't check, but they were out of the main city. They were in a different area protecting it. And, uh, you know, to me, it sounds like there's a little town of Toronto there, or sorry, a little town of Niagara Falls there, not the full-on, you know, it's not a big city or it's not necessarily a part of the big city Toronto. So really in a way, having the understanding that it's a different place, then he really is putting his life on the line for Kit and just the emotional response she had to the idea of him, you know, drawing Radford's f uh, fire to protect her and to give her the one chance to kill them. And even though he said, if we don't take this chance now, we're dead either way, um, that's good. There's a, uh, a Kamen Rider show that's very popular, it was one of the most popular ones. There's very good designs, but morally it's a little uh, all over the place for me. In that show, uh, towards the end game, or towards the, you know, towards the ending of the series, which is you know, 50 episodes long or so, there are partners, they're detective superheroes basically, kind of like Kit and uh, Red Panda, except, well anyway, <laughs> kind of like them. So, um, anyway, one of them is at risk of dying and uh they fight together as a unit and they depend upon each other 100 percent to fight anyway in common Rider double the, the fate of the world is at stake and if these guys don't transform together into the fighter they might or they will doom the rest of the world and one guy is so attached to his buddy his partner that he can't transform the guy ends up dying anyway. Spoilers for this show that you'll probably never watch. Uh, whatever. Um, and then, you know, things resolve in the end. But I was furious that nobody else who would watch the show at the same time seemed to have an issue with the fact that this guy was so weak when he was wanting... He, id he idolized hard-boiled detectives. He was so weak that he couldn't make the sacrifice to let his friend die, who ended up dying anyway, uh, in order to save the rest of the world. That is such a moral failing. Like, it's a very understandable thing. But, like, I don't know. I'm still mad at Anakin for what he did. Um, even if I can kind of understand the motivation of wanting to save his wife. And, uh, yeah, there's, like, I don't know, no consequence, no payoff, or no comeuppance or anything like that. And, you know, that's very frustrating, especially because, you know, all these people had no issue with it whatsoever. Versus um, here in Red Panda... Uh, they're willing to really commit to this whole superhero thing and put their lives on the line just so they can save strangers, even if it also helps them to save each other. Um, but I just I really love that. It's, something, it's, it's noble and it's beautiful and it's really good. And it was actually very touching, even though there's only, we're only 11 episodes into the show. This is the 11th episode. And I think I felt similarly... Uh, I think I felt the intensity in a similar way the first time I watched it. It's not just nostalgia that's making me feel strongly. Because I've, I've disliked a couple episodes and I've had no problem saying that. So I think these are genuinely uh, held convictions or genuine beliefs that I'm presenting to you about my feeling so emotional this episode uh, because of what was presented. The, the family guilt and moving beyond that and having a friend help you do that, um, that's really special to me. Um, it, it hits me right where I live, as they say. So, I thought that was all good. Electric Eel having electric powers, tying himself into the dam so that he can gain way more power. Super cool idea. Super fun. The fact that he's basically vaporized or whatever. Anyway, that's that's great superhero stuff. That's great supervillain stuff. That's a lot of fun. I mean, s seeing that visualized would be great, but in the theater of my mind, it was plenty good. So, that was... 
uh, exciting and it, you know, really raised the stakes. And I like this idea of him using this jewel to amplify his powers. Like that's like, okay, I talked a lot about these, you know, social issues or whatever, or like the character dynamics and the emotional aspect of it. But also there's like really cool superhero type stuff going on here, especially with the concept of like the dual personalities being a real thing and that being brought about. And that's what separates the electric eel from Radford. And that's just a really neat idea. I think it's a really strong idea. And I like how it parallels Red Panda and Flying Squirrel and their adventure and their, you know, journey and their you know characters basically and how you know there's something deeper going on with them potentially as far as them and their secret identities as well the virtue of balance that's extolled the um you know the seriousness of being able to be content with both sides of you be accepting the darkness within you as well as the light and learning how to live with the two so that you can i don't know i guess kind of get the darkness to serve the light as opposed to trying to squash and completely subsume one into the other that was really cool and like you know they didn't get that deep with it but um it was good and then they ended up making a joke about <laughs> red panda's alter ego going out with more you know dumb rich women <laughs> and that was a lot of fun that was a good a good gag to end the episode on so anyway uh there was no new lore stuff um they talked about you know they've talked about their boomerangs before which i don't think i've ever specifically called it that they have boomerangs that they throw like a batman would um let me see what else by the way, Bill Finger and Bob Kane took a bunch of stuff from one of the Shadow stories for the first Batman comic book, the uh, Ace Chemicals or Acme Chemicals theft or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think if the Batarangs or the Boomerangs came from the Shadow. I don't think they do, but I could be wrong about that because I don't know the books. as well. I mean, there's like 300 books, so I don't know them all very well. Anyway, yeah, there wasn't really anything new as far as their tech or gadgets are concerned. Um, it's just using what they have. Uh, you know, it's a great effect. So, you know, that was good. There's nothing wrong with that. And, uh, yeah, Radford's an interesting villain. I like this electric heel. I like the idea of him. I've, I like Electro from Marvel Comics, you know, from Spider-Man. He's a really cool villain, and I like this idea of this electric heel. Um, yeah, these cool electric powers are a lot of fun. And, oh, yeah, like I was saying, too, about, like, focusing through them through the gems and stuff, like, that's all super cool, like, great, you know, ridiculous sci-fi comic book logic. And uh, I love that kind of stuff. They, all the little gadgets and gizmos and, like, ways that people can amplify themselves, their powers, their abilities, those are all super fun. And uh, I really dig it. Good stuff. So this was a great episode. And, yeah, I'm going to do another one next week. So stick around for that. You can always check these things out at dakotaringtheater.com. Of course, I suggest you listen to them in full before you come over and hear my thoughts and commentary on them because I think it's more fun. And then we can have a bit of a conversation if you take exception to something I say or if you like or want to add to something I've said. So anyway, with that, folks, uh, I don't have much else to say except for check out all my stuff. I'm doing lots of different reviews, lots of analysis, and I'm working harder and harder to get to writing superhero stuff as opposed to the kids books I've been writing recently, which have their own adventure and uh, mystery and, and super, well, heroics at least, if not super heroics. Although some of the kids do transform and turn into these fighters to fight the darkness. So you might like that if you enjoy Red Panda. And maybe I'll even include a link here in the show notes um, for you to find uh, one of my kids stories. So anyway, with that, folks, I hope that you are well and that you be well. This is MJ signing out. I hope you enjoyed that. Go to mjmunoz.com to leave any questions, comments, or other feedback you might have. There you can find all of my analysis, art, and fiction. I cover books, tokusatsu, comic books, anime, and more. Look around, you're sure to find something else that you'll enjoy as well. This has been a Story Over Everything production.